my name is David Rookby. I was immediately attracted to the notion of working with lights because I hadn't really worked with lights before. I worked a lot with video, I worked a lot with robotics and sound, but light was sort of a new domain. I thought the whole team was fantastic. I think there, there's always going to be in a situation like this where there are certain technical things that have to be achieved and certain uh, an openness to, to explore a range of ideas. And I was amazed at how much got set up, how, how efficiently everything went up and came down. But it was, uh, it was quite a remarkably coherent, cooperative uh, experience. The feedback I got from the students was that it was interesting to be involved in process that was outside of their normal experience using lights, for example, if they were lighting students or, or for people who are lighting designers. You know, uh, this giving the dynamic control over the lighting over to the public in this unusual way was, was uh, an interesting twist on, some, on a kind of sort of technology they're very familiar with. It meant there were lots of ideas at play. The whole piece had a sort of a stream of data, starting with the voice, captured by five microphones, sound signals, the sound signals from people's voice were, uh, came to my computer through a sound card. So the computer then analyzed aspects of those sounds. Um, in some cases they were just looking for the presence of vocalization, and in some cases it was doing more analysis of whether the sounds were like vowels and what kinds of vowels, like ow, e, and ah and sometimes looking at more percussive things like <laughs> So the computer got this information from the sound and then it composed actually something visual sent as a video signal to the lighting controller then essentially interpreted that image as instructions for the lights. I had a bunch of blocks of color on the screen and those blocks of color would vary in their intensity and the, their color based on decisions my software was making based on the sound that was coming in. And the uh, light controller was picking the average color and intensity of each of those squares as the controllers to then translate those through the colors that the lights would be. I think the piece worked really nicely as a public installation in the sense that people felt very comfortable interacting with it, were intrigued with it. Uh, went from, from microphone to microphone, trying out the different things. Um, I think some people even found some of the experiences quite moving. I was very interested to see that that kind of interaction was manageable for the, for the kind of flows that you get at Nuit Blanche. To have a scenario where people could just come and engage. It was, it was, it was interesting to discover that there is a, a, a model that works for interactions at something like Green Ball. I mean, a bit in awe of the whole City Lights organization you know, and the, the energy and passion they put into doing something which was not in, their, in any of their sort of main streams of business, but you know, something they just they, they, they got excited about doing and, and put you know, so much energy and organization and goodwill into making happen. So that was, uh, you know, it's always really positive when you have an experience like that with a, with a group. Um, gives you faith in what groups can do.